Good evening and thank you very much, Plamen. First of all, for the invitation to participate to such a very interesting uh, conference. I have learned a lot of things. I am uh, passionate about history of computers because I participated from the first generation of computers and I am still active with uh, social networks, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook and so on. Uh, so I actually learn a lot of things and you will see from my presentation that some of the things are confirmed and some I should have, I should correct. First about the two authors, I was presented by Plumman. Uh, Horia, which is here, he is a senior researcher of the Institute of Computer Technology, Filiala uh, Timisara branch, and I have to say that I was the first head of the Timisara branch in 1968, 69, and he is the last one. So we are covering the whole, uh, the whole area. Uh, so I will uh, start by trying to see which are and which were the first computers in the world and in Eastern Europe. I mean computers, digital computers and electronic tube computers, not to have any difficulty in understanding because sometimes people talk about analog computers, but I don't uh, want to talk about that. Romanian first computer and what happened with the Romanian computer industry and also is an organization, MPKVT, which was discussed today, and why Romania had a certain singular position in that organization, you probably will understand today after so many years. And of course about a subject which was not dealt today, how to restore all the equipment. You will see also the activity which was done in Timisara about restoring old type old computers. First, I tried to see which were the first. So, ABC Atanasov, very computer, which was mentioned today, probably should be considered the first one. Colossus from UK, which was for tens of years kept in secret by the British because it was used to solve the Enigma. And Alan Turing worked on that. And only recently we talk about computers, but finally I saw that the first to be considered the first electronic uh, digital computer is still ENIAC from USA, followed by Mark I. All this information is from uh, literature or from internet. Sometimes if I have to correct, we have to correct also the information which is uh, on internet. AC from UK, Zuse from uh, Switzerland, EDVAC from USA, IBM 700, and the first one which I found is BESP-1 from Soviet Union. After the information we got today from uh, our uh, presenter from Russia, probably I should consider MESP, not BESP, but we have to discuss. Yeah, or M1. And the first one outside uh, USSR was quite, uh, you know, uh, accepted uh, position in Romania was Victor Tomavis Chifa. I discovered and I put on my uh, pyramid uh, before uh, Chifa, even if it is not from Romania, Sapo, Sapo from Czechoslovakia. I understand today that, that it was mostly relay based. So both are right. So the first computers outside Soviet Union are uh, from Czechoslovakia in 1956 uh, uh, Sapo and in Romania Chifa 1 from uh, the Institute of Atomic Physics. It was con uh, the next was Poland, Hungary with M3 and Bechip 1 from Romania and so on. But I think I have the next slide where I put all the information in the table. Uh, we distributed the, the paper so you can uh, uh, look at this uh, uh, table and uh, give me the information to correct because I am interested when the article will be published to have the correct information about all the computers which were uh, made in that part of the world in those pioneering years. I remember talking to somebody from the management of IEEE Computer Society 
They said little is known about what happened in Russia and in Eastern Europe in that period of time. So they decided to offer the Computer Pioneer Award to people who are not uh, alive, which is not the policy of IEEE Computer Society. And at that time, every country proposed some people, and in Romania it was uh, academician Moisil who received the Computer Pioneer Award for the activity, which was very little known in the West. So, the first computers in uh, Eastern Europe, in my opinion, are best in uh, USSR, SAPO or SAPO in Czechoslovakia, CIFA 1 in Romania, XYZ in Poland, M3 in Hungary, the same year, MECHIP 1 in Romania, SER 22 in Yugoslavia, and VITOSA in Bulgaria, and DACIC 1 in Romania, the same year. Of course, it was said today, and I accept, it was a very difficult period of year because cybernetics was considered a capitalist pseudoscience or a bourgeois pseudoscience. And the technology divide, limited at that time for several years, started to grow because, you see, ENIAC was in 1946, BESM in 52. Not a very long period of time. But if you look today, the divide grows. And it grows firstly because of the hardware problems. I mean, the integrated circuits industry could not keep up with the West. And not so much with the algorithm, and mathematician, and the algebra extraction. So uh, I said that uh, at that time the complexity of computer architecture was not so big. Programming was simple. And the complex operating system started also to show their difference. And people who worked for Riyadh understood very well what mean to make a clone of the IBM operating systems. And people who later worked for mini computers also from uh, uh, the operating system for mini computers. Now, I come to Romania. Once again, if you have other data about what happened in Eastern Europe and Central Europe, please tell me and I will check with the literature and correct all the figures. The first Romanian computer was made in the Institute of Atomic Physics in Bucharest, uh, started in 1954 and put into operation in April 57, that's what I uh, corrected you, uh, Kirill, by Victor Toma. It has many electronic tools, magnetic drum memory, paper tape input, type of, oh, almost every computer in that period had the same thing. Uh, Victor Toma continued to have new versions, CIFA 1 and CIFA, CIFA is in Romanian, probably pronounced in English CIFA, but it's CIFA, it's Computer of the Institute of Atomic Physics, that's what it stands for. Uh, he built the second generation under the name CHET 1, CHET 500, in 1952-54, your knowledge that Victor Toma contributed to the Vitoja, the Bulgarian computer, and also in the same institute, for a socialist country, this could not be believed. There was another team led by Armand Segal, sorry, building a computer called CHIFA 101 which he claimed to be better than CIFA 1. Why? Because Thomas built the computer in parallel architecture. Segal felt that electronic tubes are costly and he built a serial computer. So he built a computer of the same uh, performance but uh, half in size. Both of them worked with us in the Computer Institute. Unfortunately, both of them are not uh, Alive, but they were in a big competition in the Institute of, uh, Computer, uh, of Atomic Physics. Uh, one of the first Romanian computers was Mechip 1. Actually, it was the second and the first built in an university in Timisoara, put into operation in 1961, uh, 2000 electronic tubes, and so on and so on. The speed is similar to CIFA. But it used for the first time the concept of microprogramming based on a paper sent by Sir Maurice Wilkes of the Cambridge University 
Uh, as I understood from presentation today and from the literature, there are two sources. One source was West, Czechoslovakia with Voboda, which they visited, Poland. Your professor visited. The Romanian people could not visit the United States, they were forbidden. Say they look to Moscow, or to Kiev, or to Minsk, or to Leningrad. So the computers in Romania were mostly inspired by Russian articles, but the chipped one was inspired by market programming by, by Wilkes. Uh, you can see a picture. This is Wilhelm Löwenfeld, one of the first computer pioneers I'll mention later. And, and that uh, young people, it's me, at that time uh, much thinner than I am, uh, I am today. Um, the computer was, I mean, I joined as a student the team, and I was in charge with uh, matrix decoding the instruction, diode matrix decoding the instruction, which was quite a labor work, because you have to take every instruction and to build a matrix, as that probably, it was a repetitive work, and it was given to me as a, as a student. I joined immediately after I finished. We built the second computer, Matchip 2, which was transistorized fully, and we designed Matchip 3, but Matchip 3 was built too late because the computer industry took over, I will mention later. The third family was Dachik. That was built in the Institute of Computing of the Cluj-Napoca, branch of the Academy of Sciences, put into operation in 93. There was a team led by Emil Muntan and Georg Farkas, first generation also, and they built also Dachik 200 in 1968, fully transistorized, was a nucleus of operating system. Which are the Romanian computer pioneers? First, a person which was mentioned today, academician Grigori Munisil. He was the mathematician, founder of School of Polyvalent Logic, and the big promoter of, uh, I would say in the world today, evangelist of uh, computers and cybernetics. And he came to schools, to university, talking about that and convincing people. But not only, he mentored all Chifa and Mechip and Les Dacic, because Dacic was promoted by academician Tiberio Popovici, uh, which was the founder of the School of Appli Applied Automatic Calculus. Chifa, Bucharest, I mentioned Victor Toma, Arman Segal, in Mechip, uh, Victor Toma and Arman Segal both passed away. Uh, Wilhelm Lovenfeld passed away in the United States. Josef Kaumis is still alive in Germany. Me, myself, I am here. Dacic, Cluj Napoca, Emil Muntano passed away. Georg Farkas and Mircea Bocule live in Cluj. In uh, 2003, the president of Romania uh, gave awards to all computer pioneers. So you have to have a unique picture, having Victor Toma here. Arman Segal here, which I mentioned. Uh, TV Shara team is presented only me because uh, Levenfeld was in the United States and uh, Kaufman in uh, Germany. Uh, the team from uh, Cluj was full. Emil Muntan, Georg Farkas and Mircea Bok. That is a picture in uh, February 2003. And I think we have here also Dan Bedros, who was head of the Timișoara branch for many years, and head of Alcatel Timișoara, and present here also as a participant to the conference. We had an early international cooperation. Uh, first, uh, as I told you, Oisil was a promoter of exchanges, of visits. He brought with us professor from uh, uh, Soviet Union, from Hungary, from Czechoslovakia. Uh, Victor Toma visited Dubna. I saw a picture shown by Kirill uh, with him in Moscow. Levenfeld visited Leningrad. Uh, we had a very active cooperation with Cybernetics Research Group of the Hungarian Academy of Science. I think Balin can tell me exactly what was the name, because I met him at that time for the first time. We came here for the magnetic drum memory, which is here in the show. 
the same type of memory was used in Egypt, and this was actually the proto I mean, uh, made after a Minsk computer uh, RAM memory. Uh, I made not only uh, Balin, but also Kovacs Gyoza at that time. And in the Kovacs Gyoza book, I discovered a very interesting picture. That is Levenfeld, that's his wife, Balin Gyoza, and that's me. <laughs> that is in 1963, too, when he came for uh, acquiring a magnetic drum in the name of cooperation. I think we pay nothing, but uh, that was the time where cooperation was based more on relations and friendship and things like that. Uh, we had, as I mentioned, uh, very good cooperation with uh, Professor Wilkes, the father of microprogramming, and uh, the person who uh, implemented the first computer in the UK, actually uh, ENIAC. He wrote a letter, he gave back the paper, not secret documentation, but just the paper on microprogramming which was used to build the, the architectural chip. And later, when I had the opportunity to go for a study in the UK, Kaufman wrote to Wilkes, asking him to receive me in his mathematical laboratory in Cambridge University. He said, yes, of course. I was under the grant by British Council. And after very many years, uh, Wilkes was 94, I think. And he wrote me a letter, which I put here, which is quite interesting because he remembered things I forgot. <laughs> but probably this uh, uh, makes true the belief that uh, people at the high, I mean, all the age, start to remember things very well when uh, they were young. He remembered how I worked with the Cambridge multiple access system, which was the first thing I saw, which was totally different from Egypt working in real time with many terminals around the computer, which was an Atlas computer at the time, one of the supercomputers of the world. We had also other types of cooperation. You have a Russian language letter from the same institute you mentioned today, Moskovsky Energetics Institute. Uh, yes, Professor Kushelev, who was at that time working in the field of uh, uh, self-learning automata, we wrote him a letter, he wrote us back and gave a documentation about that. Uh, you can see his signature and the date, which was 17th of June, 63. Also, because we have the first computers, we started to have the first uh, courses for students. And it was Timishara who was the leader in that field, uh, we started in 64, and in 66, the first generation of computer engineers uh, left the school and uh, started to work in uh, different computer centers around Romania, our research institute. Uh, Professor Rogozhan was one of the initiators. He did not work with Mechip, he tried to build another computer, like in IFA, in Chifa. There were two teams building in competition two different computers. Uh, but finally, in that field, we cooperated and we succeeded to have the first computer engineer. Two years later, Polytechnic of, of Bucharest and other universities started to have computer graduates, also in Cluj Napoca. What you can see there, there are some lectures based on my personal notes. This is an laboratory work. Uh, with uh, what is called a bistable or something like that. And this is a program uh, for uh, written in machine code to check something in Machip 1. The programming was done in machine code. No assembler at the time, no compiler, nothing. Started later. But the government in Romania, as the government in other neighboring countries, Notice that the gap between our own computer and Western computers started to be alarmingly big, big, both as time lag and technological capability to industrial manufacturing. So in 1967, the government of Romania decided to have an industrial development of computers. A governmental committee was uh, set up, led by a vice prime minister, 
And the first permanent secretary was just Professor Mihai Draganescu. You may know him. He was the president of Romanian Academy after 1990. He unfortunately died five years uh, ago. There was a national plan to introduce computer in the economy, a modern infrastructure of a computer industry, which will mean computers, institute, uh, uh, servicing organization. Uh, all research team from Institute of Atomic Physics, Timișoara uh, Polytechnica, Politica of Timișoara, Institute of Cluj, were joined in one institute. We were, have no choice. They say, move to Bucharest. We refuse to move, including myself, because I like Timișoara. But they say, okay, in that case, we make branches in Timișoara and Cluj. And the branches were made. Uh, Victor Toma was appointed the first scientific director of this institute. And the manufacturing plan were set up on paper, because later, in a few years, they were actually implemented. In 1970, also an Institute of Informatics was set up to coordinate implementation of uh, uh, informatics in the economy. And missions were sent to United States, United Kingdom, France, Italy, Netherlands, and Japan to see who will give us a license to make computers in Romania, to produce computers. Unfortunately, IBM, because it was discussed today, said, OK, we will sell you computers, but no license. Because you know the old COCOM regulation. Almost all countries said the same thing. We'll sell you computers, but not manufacturing. The only France, uh, countries uh, which uh, actually agreed to give us computers to manufacture them was France which was led at that time by General de Gaulle. And if you remember, General de Gaulle refused to work anymore with NATO. He said, OK, the general headquarters of NATO should leave France. And France was not anymore a part of the military operation of NATO at that time. And why? It's a computer problem. United States refused to give France a supercomputer controlled ETA 660. And the French people were very upset. And General de Gaulle said, OK, we launch Plan Calcul. Make our own computers. That is the origin of the Plan Calcul. And the Plan Calcul was very beneficial to Romania, because in 1968, General de Gaulle came to Romania. And they said, give the Romanians what they want. Not only they give us a license for a medium-sized computer, which was at the time mainframe, but they gave us the technology for printed circuit boards, which was new at the time. And also they gave us a complete factory for integrated circuits. So actually, at that moment, Romania started to have a factory for integrated circuits, a factory for uh, printed circuit boards, multi-layer, very modern for that moment, I mean, latest patient, and also a factory to build computers a replica of the Toulouse factory of CIA. What I said it's on this uh, slide. So Romania actually had a very big leap forward. But as it happened in such cases, not everybody was happy. IBM baked people were not very happy. But not because IBM did something. They liked IBM, they liked big computers, really made computers put into... And uh, people from uh, Academy of Economic Science, led by another uh, vice prime minister, and uh, people from the industry, led by another vice prime minister, started the clash between these two. So. Uh, one group supported the creation of the industry. Another group said, OK, we want application and import uh, IBM computers. The crisis was settled directly by Ceausescu, which at that time was quite young, and not as he was in the last years. And he said, OK, we are in favor of an industry, built this industry, which had very beneficial effects for very many years. Victor Toma was against the license. Why? Because he wanted 
to produce Chifa. For obvious reasons, Chifa was not ready to be manufactured in large series and have all the uh, software which uh, Iris 50 had. So he resigned. I was lucky because I was appointed in his place at that moment. So I was in the first row of uh, Romanian computer industry for many years. Iris 50 was renamed in Romania Felix. Why Felix? Because the old name of the Roman province was De Dacia Felix. Dacia Felix. So Dacia was given to the car, which is now produced by Renault in Romania and in uh, Morocco and in Russia under the name Dacia. And Felix was given to computers, which almost they were very important for tens of years, but not anymore. Uh, but we, in the Institute, we promoted the idea. We buy the license, but we diversify it and continue research. So we started immediately and developed a smaller computer called C32, and another one, a bigger member, C512. All together, because somebody from France through Plum and asked me how many, all together about 650 Felix mainframes were produced and 11 were exported in the in Republic of China. Later, a computer called Felix 500 was uh, manufactured with the latest technology LSI. And uh, the problem we faced in the international arena around us was that the Felix computers were not IBM compatible. Now, but time. at that moment, that it counted. <laughs> uh, Felix Computer Peripherals. First, the original license we bought uh, from uh, French, French company Sperac. They were not uh, reliable, so we replaced them by control data. Ampex core and tape memories, control data printers. Technology for core memories was not in the license because of the COCOM regulation, but the Timisara branch and uh, uh, both Dan Bedros and Horia Gligo remember very well, it was a technology which was developed completely in Timisara. So we had that uh, memory, ferrite memory block, manufactured in Timisara and exported in large quantity. Later, we exported even in USSR. Why? I'll show you later. That was the only success, because in USSR that was uh, completely uh, embargo on Romanian electronic products. Why? Political reasons, you know, Ceausescu, Brezhnev, Ceausescu, Khrushchev, Ceausescu, uh, Gheorghiu Dej, Khrushchev, and so on and so on. Um, later, it was another interesting development, Control Data Corporation, agreed to build in Romania a joint venture manufacturing computer peripherals. And we manufactured very good and high quality disk drives, magnetic tape transports, printers, and other peripherals. Later, Control Data concentrated their activity to disk drives only. So that was the reason we did not import from Bulgaria these drives. Already Bulgarians, they, people from Bulgaria, they wanted that because uh, there was 15 million rubles, I remember, only the transit over Romania because many shipments from Bulgaria have to cross Romania. Yes. yes. What about with communications? Nobody mentioned any communications in... Yeah, the subject of computers. Let's suggest to Plamen to have uh, another conference on telecom. I'll, uh, I, I'll have many things to, to tell about telecom. And uh, of course, uh, Dan Bedros, who became uh, director general of Alcatel, I will probably will come to, to, tell, to tell you the story of telecom in Romania. <laughs> we had a, uh, we bought a license before 1989 for uh, switches. Uh, yeah, yeah. And after the. 1989, uh, we bought digital uh, exchanges, three licenses covering all aspects of Romania. So, uh, ROM control data was actually <coughs> the first uh, joint venture in the Eastern Europe with a large corporation from the United States. Uh, control data corporation was at that time one of the fifth, 
five uh, corporations in the world. Um, this helped us um, in the next stages, because we started to develop mini computers. You remember the 70s was the period, the decade of mini computers. So in the first mini computer was an independent one, I1, I100. Actually, because in 1977, we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Romania, the Romanian state. So they called it independent. I remember a Soviet minister uh, being very angry. They called it independent because they want to be independent, <laughs> which was not true, in fact. But that was uh, one of his remarks in one of the, uh, the exhibition. Uh, we named it because it was in 1977. It was continued by independent one too. A choral family was uh, competition. In many, the competition existed in hidden form. And uh, estimated 4,500 mini computers of both family were produced and exported in many countries like Czechoslovakia, East Germany, China, Middle East countries, and so on. Mostly because they were configured with ROM control data peripherals, and they were quite competitive because of that. Of course, I don't this is very much, because later we started uh, to build uh, PC or microcomputers, PC likes. Uh, all the statistics show they produced uh, only one uh, company, I mean the computer plant, 52,000 pieces of microcomputers. So it was uh, very large. In Romania also we had problems. Uh, Elena Ceausescu, the wife of Ceausescu, she forbidden the name of personal computer. She said, what means personal? It's against the ideology. Com computers are for... Uh... So we produced under various fancy names like uh, Learning Automata. Learning Automata was the name of one of these personal computers. Um, for the software field, uh, actually I mentioned that it is very difficult to build an operating system. Uh, in Felix we used the main operating system both from France, but we developed it. We built a new uh, fully operation operating system called uh, Helios but for larger mainframes. which was used in the Felix 5000. Uh, we built cloning, more or less, uh, IMS and MINOS, which were based by uh, RS6 and VMS from uh, DEC PDP, because this time we were member of the cooperation, not outside like than Riyadh or SMM. In SMM we are full participants. So now I come to ASMM and SMMM, which you, most of you know. In 1968, there was an initiative to build a real series of computers compatible IBM. Because Romania already made the choice for a non-IBM compatibility, Romanian delegation were not allowed to say that because it was a state secret, but we were against participation being there, but not participating. So in the Riyadh series, Romania participation was insignificant, which was not the case in SMFM, where we were fully participating with independent 100 computer, which was certified internationally, exporting in large quantities. And I remember the late Boris Naumov, Boris Nikolaevich Naumov, I think he died, yeah? Director he was director of INEUM, and uh, I paid in that time at least 50 visits to Moscow in different positions. Uh, this commission, it was already mentioned today. You have to look in my paper to see which was the structure. Practically all Comecon countries and Cuba were members, not Vietnam. Cuba a little bit later, but it was participating uh, uh, in different uh, organizations. Of the second, because I, I went there for a few times, so they were meetings in Cuba. And there was a coordination center, center set up in Moscow, just near the building of Comic Con, of SEV. And what is strange, in 92 I paid a visit, they still existed there. And I checked on internet, they still exist now. 
who is there, why kind of money they get, I don't know. But officially, this organization was not uh, dissolved. Uh, Romania, as I told you, was not interested in Riyadh because of the non-compatibility of Felix computers. Very interested in SMVM. Uh, the economic decisions were taken mostly by Soviet Union and were political based. That was very favorable to Bulgaria and very unfavorable to Romania because of also political reasons. The prices were much higher than the world prices, which uh, is not something characteristic to computers. All prices in Comecon were higher than uh, the world prices. So it was the moment where there is a joke. I uh, sold a uh, dog for 10,000 rubles. Oh, it's, uh, it's possible? Yes, Give, show me the money. No, no, because I received two cats of 5,000 rubles. <laughs> that was the... But uh, I think Kirill showed a very interesting table that was, was very, very good for uh, Bulgaria, and that big factory of Stara Zagora exported a lot of uh, magnetic uh, disk drives. Finally, after 1989, it happened like everywhere, the big uh, enterprises uh, were um, dissolved practically in even the buildings, because they are mostly in Bucharest, they were demolished, and very large malls and uh, pretty big uh, and interesting office buildings were instead. But we became back a major player in IT in Europe, mostly because uh, in 1989 we had more than 100,000 trained IT people. And now uh, we have the last figure, 1.4 billion euros export of software and services which for the first time is more than tourism in Romania. Why? All major multinational organizations build big centers in Romania. IBM, I think, has 2,000 people. Oracle has 4,000 people. Altogether, probably 20,000 people, only by foreign organizations. Uh, we promoted computer history events. Uh, recognition for the Kovacs Gyoze was uh, an award which I give, we gave him here in Seged, but not in this building, in the other building. Um, we marked 50th anniversary of uh, Mechip in Timisoara, and you see some of the veterans over there. We have a book, we have a dedicated uh, conference. And, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, most of this equipment was left unattended in um, proper conditions. So, uh, on the initiative of uh, Horia, which is here, the Museum of Banat has a, a very good response, and the team led by a lady, Maria Mitsu, Mitsu who could not come here, uh, started a very intense work to uh, make uh, repair and reconditioning of this equipment, which you can see the results. This is one uh, stand of Mechipt. This is the board, uh, the panel of Mechipt. This is how it looked. This is the memory, the drum memory, which is similar to the memory which is here. The restoration continues. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.